Our challenge today is to see if I can make an effective forced air incubator for less than $20 using some basic tools, some stuff you can get at any, any hardware store or home improvement store and see if I can make a good effective egg incubator less than 20 bucks. And when I say good and effective I mean keep a good steady temperature for the duration of a hatch and see how it works. That's my challenge. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with a basic foam cooler. I bought this cooler at uh, Walmart for $2.28. I'm going to use a, a fan. This is a 12 volt DC fan. You can get these off of eBay for a buck. Delivered. It's amazing. For a window, I am going to actually put a few windows in this thing. I found this stuff at the dollar store. Eight round plates. When, it's, when they're individual, you can see right through them. I'm going to make them double paned and I'm going to put four windows in this thing for a buck. I'm also going to use another dollar store find, this little photo frame. It's plexiglass, nice and thin. I'm going to slice this up and put it on top, double paned again, for the top window. For a thermostat, I'm going to attempt, and this is the greatest challenge of this endeavor here, I'm going to try to use the water heater style thermostat. This is going to be the biggest challenge because these don't work really well. They're not designed to be as sensitive as you want for an egg incubator. But there are a few tricks that I'm going to try and see if I can make this work effectively in this thing. For a heater, I'm going to use a 25 cent light bulb. You buy this little adapter for a buck, put the two together, you can plug this into an extension cord or, and suddenly you have a nice little heater. Power supply for the fan what I'm going to use is, I'm going to assume that most people have, laying around their house, a variety of power supplies from an old cell phone or all kinds of electronic apparatuses that are years old, you don't use anymore. These are very common. Find something that is as close to 12 volts as you can. This is a 12 volt fan. If it's a little bit less than that, a little bit more, it's okay. This is a 9 volt output, which should be fine to provide plenty of airflow in this device from this 12 volt fan. But we're going to test it and see if I'm right. We'll, we'll find out. For a power cord, a $1 extension cord from the dollar store. I'm going to use some basic tools, and with that, let's get started. Let me show you the basics of how this heater and thermostat combination is going to work. It's pretty simple. Plug this into the extension cord. Plug this into the wall. Okay, this is attached to the wall. We're going to assume this is the wall. And voila, obviously your light turns on. Now all you've got to do is tap in to one of these wires with this thermostat. And this is what this, when it turns off and on, it will turn this off and on. It's that simple. I'll show you in a few minutes exactly how to do that. The first step here is to decide where in the incubator you want your heater, fan, thermostat combination. Because that's going to help determine where your windows are going to go. So I'm going to take a look in here and I'm going to figure out where I want to put that heater fan thermostat combination. Okay, I've decided where I want to put it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount, looking at the inside of the, the cooler, I'm going to, once this is plugged into the extension cord, it's going to mount right in off to the side near the top with the fan blowing up and then blowing onto the thermostat above it. I'm going to have to make a little bracket. I think I'm going to try using a, a wire hanger to make a bracket that will hold both the fan and the thermostat into place. Let's see if that works. Let's start with the roof. Now, for the roof, or the lid, I'm going to use this plexiglass frame. This is, this is double ply. I'm going to slice it into pieces about that size so I can have two or a window on top that will be double paned and about that size. I'll do it off to the side again because my heater fan thermostat combination is going to be on this side. So my window will, window will be here. Let's see if that's enough to break this plexiglass. It is. And look at that. Beautiful window. I'll do the same thing on this side and I'll have a double pane. Let's see if we can snap that off. Let's then use the original piece of plexiglass to measure. Let's 
So there you have the two panes of your top piece. What I want to do here is I'm going to have a little bit of an overlap. So I don't want to cut the same size as this glass or this plexiglass. I want to cut in just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch or so, so your glass can sit on it and then uh, attach it into place. Okay, with that, I now know where to draw my line so I know where to cut. Next, let's cut it. I'm going to use a utility knife. I'm going to make sure the blade is nice and sharp, so I'm going to turn it to a side that hasn't been used before. Don't try to go all the way through in one pass. Take several passes and just slowly get farther and farther through the foam. I can feel I'm cutting through it now. I should be just about ready to pop this out. Voila! Now we're ready to put our top windows into place. A common adhesive for foam is something called foam glue. You can go to an arts and crafts store. Uh, your typical Kmart or Walmart probably has it as well. It's actually called foam glue, and it's made for foam. It works pretty well, forms a good waterproof seal, takes a while to dry, can be a little bit messy. Uh, so it's good, but I'm, I prefer to use tape. One option to use is double-sided tape, this right here. I'm going to try that on the underside. For the top, I'm going to use foil tape because it forms a good waterproof seal. It's easy to use, it's not too expensive, and it works really, really well. And it looks like this, and then you can see how I do that. Because I have pieces that are, are this size and I've got two sides of each, I'm just going to cut these in half. Feel the backing off like this. Screw on this side. Make sure your window is square. Line up like that. Just that easy. There's the top pane. Piece of cake, huh? Bottom pane. Similar. Gonna square this up down there. But down here, like I said, I'm going to use double stick tape and see how that works. Make sure it's nice and clean inside, because whatever is in there is going to stay in there. You could also use the foil tape in here with no problem. I'm just going to try this double-sided tape because I thought it would be fun to try. We're ready to put it on. Square it up. Apply a little pressure. And voila, we have a double paned top window for our incubator that cost a buck. Next, I'm going to put some windows in the sides of the container. And it's going to apply the same idea that we used for the top window, but they'll be circles instead of squares.